going to discuss osmotic pressure, which is the pressure difference that results when we have a membrane permeable only to the solvent. We have a solvent on one side of the membrane and a solute-solvent mixture on the other side. And the solvent will flow through this membrane until the pressure difference, which corresponds to this height difference with the density G for rho GH. This is the osmotic pressure. And so one form of the equation, which is derived in other screencasts, is the osmotic pressure times the molar volume of the solvent equals the mole fraction of the solute and the gas constant and in absolute temperature. Now we can rearrange this equation so the osmotic pressure is equal to now the mole fraction I'm going to write it as the moles of solute over total moles but the reality is the total moles is essentially the same as the moles of solvent because we're using really low mole fraction so that's a very good approximation rt and of course this molar volume is in the denominator now this then becomes the moles of solute times rt and the molar volume times the number of moles of solvent just becomes the total volume and so that means the osmotic pressure moles of solute divided by the total volume would be a concentration i'll use this notation which is a common one for concentration However, since we're interested in molecular weight, we'll add one more step. I'll write this as the concentration, a mass concentration, mass density, if you like, in this case, divided by the molecular weight. So the concentration, for example, grams per liter, that's what CS corresponds to, S meaning the solute. Now, this is for an ideal mixture. But what happens if we don't have an ideal mixture? Well, one way to model this, and I'm going to rearrange slightly, and I'll bring RT over to the other side of the equation. CS over the molecular weight, that's the ideal equation. And then we'll essentially correct by using, and let me write just a couple terms that we could in theory, you have a number of terms here. So this would be CS squared, and you can, of course, continue this. The idea is that now we're counting for the fact that there are interactions between the solute, and this is the osmotic virial coefficient. So let me divide actually both sides now by CS, and I'm going to, so I'm going to write the equation osmotic pressure over RTCS, then is equal to 1 over the molecular weight plus B. B2 times CS over the molecular weight plus E3 CS squared over the molecular weight. And of course, more terms in theory. And so what we want to do then, if we make measurements at a number of concentrations, we should be able to plot this. Well, if this were ideal, then we should expect the horizontal line where this value, of course here's intercept of the equation, general equation, that's one over the molecular weight. If it's not ideal, and if perhaps only this, this term is important, B2, then we might have data that looks something like this or perhaps like this. So if it's linear, we make this plot, we should be able to back out the molecular weight. But you can see if it's linear, so this term's not important, the intercept, molecular weight, the slope allows us to calculate this osmotic virial coefficient.